We've got a disruptor story this morning in our executive edge. It's called Wealthfront. Uh, they're an automated investment firm, disrupt firm in disrupting the traditional financial uh, industry, uh, services industry. It's got big name backers, including venture capitalists Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz, as well as Marissa Meyer. She just joined at Yahoo, right? Uh, and they went from $100 million in assets under management to $800 million in just one year. Here with us now is the president and CEO of Wealthfront, uh, Adam Nash. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Great to be here. So, so for those who don't know what this is, mm -hmm. just give us just a 30 second explanation of, of, of how Wealthfront works. Sure, it's really quite simple. Um, we're the largest and fastest growing automated investment service. Um, we basically provide an automatically rebalanced and reinvested index fund portfolio um, without the high minimums um, or high fees of traditional providers. So, so if I called Charles Schwab or mm -hmm. Fidelity and said, I'm gonna give you my money, I want you to put me in some indexes, I want you to keep rebalancing, what would they do that's different than what you would do? They don't do this. Right, so there's a lot of people out there who will give you a portfolio of index funds, basic asset allocation. We do 11 different asset classes. Um, but what they won't do is automatically monitor and maintain that portfolio every day. We do rebalancing, intelligent dividend reinvestment, and even advanced features like tax loss harvesting on a continuous daily basis, all in software. You mean, when you say rebalancing, you mean if I tell you I wanna be 20% in bonds and 80% in stocks, as that moves, you'll continue to move my money around to make sure you keep that, or? Yeah, we monitor the portfolio every day. When you join Wealthfront, you take a questionnaire to assess your risk tolerance, both emotional risk tolerance, as well as your objective financial situation. We give you an asset allocation, different for taxable accounts and retirement accounts because different asset classes make sense in different accounts. You know, muni bonds might make sense in a taxable account, REITs in an IRA. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have that allocation, we monitor daily and use every opportunity to efficiently rebalance it. So for example, well, if your REIT fund pays a dividend on April 7th, mm -hmm. but you're underweight emerging markets because it's been down lately, that dividend gets reinvested in emerging markets, so you don't have to sell one and buy another. And this it's is all more tax efficient. All done in software. I was just thinking about last year where the stock market was up more than 30%. People right. had this massive overbalancing in stocks if you hadn't played around with it, but you do that on a daily basis? On a daily basis. Actually, Vanguard put out the research in 2005. It's called trigger-based rebalancing. Mm -hmm. So there's no magic day of the year to rebalance. Once a quarter, once a year, it's never always right. Instead, what we do is look statistically at the portfolio and when it's ever mathematically more out of balance than it should be, that's when we rebalance it. And like I said, it doesn't Do have to be- Do I get charged a fee for every time you sell and rebalance on a No basis? commissions. This is the great thing about Wealthfront. Because we're in software, we're actually completely free under $10,000. We never charge commissions for trades. Above $10,000, we only charge one quarter of 1%. For each trade or, or, no. or just on the, the whole, whatever- For whatever assets under, under management, management on an annual basis. And. Is there somebody I can call if I want to talk, or is this all? No, no, no I'm serious. Is this, this is, is, is there like a phone number I can call or do I have to do everything online? No, no, it's, it's funny. I get asked this question a lot, so I, I appreciate it. Um, we have a phone number on the homepage. You can call. But nobody um, does. You have to understand, to most of our clients are under 35, 60%. Uh, uh, 90% are under 50. You only want a phone number because you're I old. can tell you most of our clients would pay us to never call them. <laughs> right? They like doing it online. They like email. More importantly, they like, frankly, having transparent information. If you want to know. Wait, did you say it's a one, per, one quarter of 1% on a quarterly basis? No, and on an annual, 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 annual basis. Yeah, it's, it's about one-fifth the cost of a traditional service. And because it's not just the fees, the minimums for a traditional wealth manager are just so very high for a normal person. Um, we like... You know, most of our clients are young, they're getting right. started. We're excited about them. They're at the beginning of their income and wealth accumulation. And um, so what are you so putting them in, though? You're not putting them in individ individual stocks, all ETFs? All ETFs. Um, we look at ETFs in 11 different asset classes. We find the ones that have the lowest expense ratios, the lowest drift, the best execution statistics, and we pick those for each asset class, actually two, um, so that we can take advantage of tax loss harvesting when it's available. If I were to try to compare your service to the traditional mm -hmm. services out there, what kind of gains can I pick up just off of the fees that hopefully I'm saving with you relative to everybody else? Yeah, so um, there's been a lot of research on this, but most of it points to the fact that individual investors normally do terribly in the market, right? They underperform three, even 4%. Right. A lot of that is fees, you know, one to one and a half percent is the norm. So if you're paying only one quarter of 1%, you're literally saving 80% right. on the fees you'd normally pay. Can I ask you sort of a, this is a more cosmic generational question. 
clearly you're, you're in, into indexes and ETFs, mm -hmm. and you talk about people being under 35 right. who don't ever want to even pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. There was a whole world of day traders. There was a whole world of people who called their brokers mm -hmm. and said, I want Starbucks. I want Apple. Right. I want to get into this IP, whatever. Is that over? We talk all the time about where the retail investor is and what their interests are. And to the extent that your service represents sort of a, a new way of thinking about that, what is it? Well, you know, I, I think you're right. I think there is a generational shift. Um, look, Gen Y millennials, they've been through two market crashes already. If you asked an average person who's young whether they think the market will crash in five years, most of them will say yes. They think markets always crash. Ironically, this puts them in a position where they actually believe that they're not going to make their fortune beating the market, right? There are still 10 to 15% of people who want to get in there, who want to trade. But the other 80%, if they're a doctor, they want to be a doctor. If they're a lawyer, they want to be a lawyer, and engineer, engineer. you think the idea that we could have a 10, 15, 20 year sort of bull run? That, 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 that that's an impossibility now? No, they just don't think that they can beat the market. We can have a bull run. Maybe emerging markets will be huge. I Maybe guess bonds the question lose. becomes, uh, what we were just, just not going to beat everyone else Warren doing Buffett, it. And his point is, just put it in a Vanguard index fund. That's right. Which is charging probably 20 basis points too annually. I like to think that Warren hasn't checked out our site yet. Otherwise, he'd probably be positive on what we're doing. But I mean, honestly, that's correct. Um, young people today are very passionate about what they're doing. And remember, there's 90 million members of the millennial generation Third of them aren't even out of college yet, but the oldest edge of that generation in their early 30s, some of them are finding real success. And what they want in a solution is they like it automated, they like software, they want it cheap, and they don't buy the pitch of beating the market. They're very happy with an inexpensive passive solution. We gotta run, but what keeps Charles Schwab or any of these other guys from doing what you're doing? Or JP Morgan from just offering your, I mean, I, I appreciate you have the software, but is, is your software, nobody can replicate it? Well, I like to think that we have some of the best software folks in Silicon Valley, um, but the truth is they're very focused on the biggest financial situation in the last several decades, which is the baby boomers retiring. Charles Schwab manages right. 2.3 trillion. They're looking for the next trillion dollars. Gen Y as a whole only has about a trillion dollars. They're fighting all over the 10 plus trillion that the baby boomers have. And baby boomers want something different. They don't want the automated solution. They want to talk to someone about how they're going to retire, when they take Social Security, et cetera. Okay, the music's playing us out. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Yeah, when Thank is you. Our, when is our